Wonders of Saint Joseph Part 12 The virtues and gifts of Saint Joseph Saint Joseph virtues are those specially of the hidden life in a degree proportion to that of his sanctifying grace virginity humility poverty patience prudence fidelity simplicity faith enlightened by the gifts of the holy spirit confidence in god and perfect charity he preserved what had been confided to him with a fidelity proportionate to his inestimable value Bosweth makes this a general observation about the virtues of the hidden life. It is a common failing of men to give themselves entirely to what is outside and to neglect what is within, to work for mere appearances and to uh, neglect what is solid and lasting, to think often of the impression they make and little of what they ought to be. That is why the most highly esteemed virtues are those which concern the conduct and direction of affairs. The hidden virtues on the contrary which are practiced away from the public view and under the eye of God alone are not only neglected but hardly even heard of and yet this is the secret of true virtue a man must be built up interiorly in himself before he deserves to be given rank among others and if this foundation is lacking all the other virtues however brilliant will be mere display they will not make the man according to god's heart joseph sought god in simplicity joseph found god in detachment Joseph enjoyed God's company in obscurity. Saint Joseph's humility must have been increased by the thought of the gratitude of his exceptional vocation. He must have said to himself, "Why has the Most High given me rather than any other man his son to watch over? Only because that was his good pleasure." Joseph was freely preferred from all eternity to all other men to whom the Lord could have given the same gifts and the same fidelity to prepare them for so exceptional a vocation. We see in St. Joseph's predestination a re- reflection of the gratuitous predestination of Jesus and Mary, the knowledge of the value of the grace he received of an uh, of its absolute gratuitousness. far from injuring his humility would strengthen it he would think in his heart what have you that you have not received joseph appears the most humble of the saints after mary more humble than any of the angels if he is the most humble he is by that fact the greatest for the virtues are all connected and a person's charity is as elevated as his humility is profound he that is lesser among you all is he is the greater Bosuet says well though by an extraordinary grace of the eternal father he possessed the greatest treasure it was far from joseph's thought to pride himself on his gifts or to make them known but he hid himself as far as possible from mortal eyes enjoying with god alone the mystery revealed to him and the infinite riches of which he was the custodian joseph has in his house what could attract the eyes of the whole world and the world does not know him he guards a god man and breathes not a word of it He is a witness of so great a mystery and he tastes it in secret without divulging it abroad. His faith cannot be shaken in spite of the darkness of the unexpected mystery. The word of God communicated to him by the angel threw light on the virginal conception of the savior. Joseph might have hesitated to believe a thing so wonderful, but he believes it firmly in the simplicity of his heart. by his simplicity and his humility he reaches up to divine heights obscurity follows once more and joseph was poor before receiving the secret of the most high he becomes still poorer when jesus is born for jesus comes to separate men from everything so as to unite them to god there is no room for the savior in the last of the inns of bethlehem joseph must have suffered from having nothing to offer to mary and her son His confidence in God was made manifest in trials. Persecution came soon after Jesus' birth. Herod tried to put him to death. The head of the holy family was forced to conceal the child to take refuge in a distant country where he was unknown and where he did not know how he could earn a living. But he set out on the journey relying on divine providence. His love of God and of souls did not cease to increase during the hidden life of Nazareth. The incarnate word is an unfailing source of graces, ever newer and more choice for docile souls who oppose no obstacle to his action we have said already when speaking of mary that the progress of such docile souls is one of uniform acceleration that is to say they are carried all the more powerfully to god the nearer they approach him this law of spiritual gravitation was realized in joseph his charity grew up 
to the time of his death and the progress of his latter years was more rapid than those of his earlier years for finding himself nearer to god he was more powerfully drawn by him along with the theological gifts the gifts of the holy spirit and the virtues which are connected with charity grew continuously those of understanding and of wisdom made his living faith more penetrating and more attuned to the divine in a simple but most elevated way his contemplation rose to the infinite goodness of god in its simplicity his contemplation was the most perfect after mary's his loving contemplation was sweet but it demanded of him the most perfect spirit of abnegation and sacrifice when he recalled the words of simeon this child will be a sign that will be contradicted and thy own soul a sword shall pierce he needed all his generosity to offer to god the infant jesus and his mother mary whom he loved incomparably more than himself saint joseph death was a privileged one saint francis de sales writes that it was a death of love the same holy doctor teaches with suarez that saint joseph was one of the saints who rose after the resurrection of the lord and appeared in the city of jerusalem he holds also that these resurrections were definitive and that joseph entered heaven then body and soul saint thomas aquinas is much more reserved regarding this point saint joseph's role in the sanctification of souls the humble carpenter is glorified in heaven to the extent to which he was hidden on earth he to whom the incarnate word was subject has now an incomparable power of intercession pope leo the 23rd in his encyclical quam quam plurius finds in saint joseph mission in regard to the holy family the reasons why he is the patron and protector of the universal church just as mary mother of the savior is spiritual mother for all christian joseph looks on all christians as having been confided to himself he is the defender of the holy church which is truly the house of god and the kingdom of god on earth what strikes us most in saint joseph's role till the end of time is that there are united in it an in admirable way apparently opposed prerogatives he is influencing universal over the whole church and yet like divine providence he descends to the least details model and workman it takes an interest in everyone who turns to him he is the most universal of the saints and yet he helps a poor man in his ordinary daily needs his action is primarily of spiritual order and yet it also extends to temporal affairs he is the supporter of families and of communities the hope of the sick watches over christians of all conditions of all countries all fathers of families husbands and wives consecrated virgins over the rich to inspire them to distribute their possessions charitably and over the poor so as to help them he is attentive to the needs of the great sinners and of souls advanced in virtue he is the patron of a happy death of lost causes he is terrible to the demons and saint trees of avila tells us that he is the guide of interior souls in the ways of prayer His influence is a wonderful reflection of that of divine wisdom which reacheth from end to end mightily and ordereth all things sweetly. He has been clothed and will remain clothed in divine splendor. Grace has become fruitful in him and he will share its fruit with all who strive to attain to the life which is hid with Christ in God. The silent night, the holy night. Saint Joseph sweetly and continuously stimulates us to love serve and imitate the queen of his heart the immaculate mother of Jesus Saint Joseph is the most of a, and the greatest Marian saint of all the saints his love for Mary is greater than Saint Bernard of Clairvaux Saint Louis de Montpensier Saint Alphonse de Ligori Saint Maximilien Kolbe Saint John Paul II combined there's never been a greater Marian saint than Saint Joseph and never will be for Saint Joseph is the model for total consecration to Mary Long before Calvary when Jesus commanded all of his disciples to take Mary into their hearts and homes Saint Joseph had already taken Mary into his heart and into his home She is his heart and she is his home Everything he did was done for Jesus and Mary he lived and died for Jesus and Mary and like Joseph do not be afraid to take Mary into your home Saint Joseph was first human being to totally consecrate to the blessed virgin Mary If you ask our lady who is the one human person in all of Christianity who who has loved her the most and who devoted her Uh, the most service and served her most faithfully she would undoubtedly point to saint joseph for he is the prototype the blueprint and the model for how to live a life of total consecration to mary there are various uh, marian consecration uh, promoted by different saints like saint louis de montfort blessed william joseph uh, chamenard saint uh, maximilian colbe the servant of god joseph cantinix and others all have find their fulfillment and perfection in the person of saint joseph 
Saint Louis de Montfort and his Marian consecration teaches people to be slaves of Mary and Jesus. Blessed William Joseph Chamara teaches people to act as the heel of Mary, crushing the head of Satan. The servant of God Joseph Cantonese instructs the people to become an apparition of Mary. Saint Maximilian Kolbe's method of Marian consecration instructs people to be property of Mary. All of these forms are wonderful ways of describing one fundamental dimension of all Marian consecration. Be another Joseph for Mary. All the great Marian movement, the Militia Immaculata, the Legion of Mary, the former Blue Arrow, the World Apostolate of Fatima, and so many other Marian chivalric movements, all point towards the one path of saint- sainthood. A person who is chivalrous is noble, well-mannered, courageous in battle, a refuge for the weak. And Saint Joseph is the most chivalrous of all Christian who teaches everyone, men, women, children, to be spiritual knights of the Queen of Heaven. He is in fact the first consecrated knight of the Holy Queen. For centuries, the Christians have referred to Virgin Mary as Our Lady. This term, Our Lady, acknowledges the great love, respect, honor, and reverence that is owed to Mary. It is a term that bespeaks chivalry. It should come as no surprise that Saint Joseph is the first man to speak of Mary as his lady. Mary is Saint Joseph's woman. Before her feminine wonder and beauty, he bows in loving reverence. His mission is to have all hearts bow before her in love. For this reason, Saint Joseph, greatest knight of Our Lady. During the Middle Ages, many stories and legends of knights traveling far and wide on heroic quests in search of the Holy Grail, the chalice that held the blood of Jesus at the Last Supper. During the age of chivalry, no one but the priest drank the blood of Jesus from the chalice at Mass. For this reason, there are many stories that tell us knights set out on quests in search of the lost Holy Grail, believing that if they drank from the chalice, they would be given eternal life. These heroic quests were noble, well-intentioned, but unnecessary. All Catholic state of grace who receive the blood of Christ at Mass get eternal life, even if they don't drink from the chalice whatsoever. However, they, if they remain in the state of grace, observe the Ten Commandments and teachings of the Church. These stories of quest of medieval knights are unnecessary for some reason, but all who find the true chalice of our Lord's precious blood want to look at St. Joseph, the first and the greatest knight of Our Lady, for he knows where to find the living chalice containing the life-giving blood of Jesus Christ. This holy grail that St. Joseph possesses has not been lost, for he stands ready to give this chalice to all his spiritual children. When St. Joseph teaches his children is that the Virgin Mary is the Holy Grail. She is what every Christian knight should seek. Unlike the chalice that was used at the Last Supper, this vessel has not been lost. Mary, the Holy Grail, can easily be found. And those who find her find Jesus because those who find her find Catholicism and its greatest treasure, Jesus, in the Holy Communion. Mary desires to lead all souls to the Holy Mass where they can receive the lamp of God and attain eternal life. All who imitate St. Joseph will discover Mary and the saving mystery of Holy Mass. From heaven, St. Joseph continues his quest to lead all souls to Jesus through Mary and from heaven he looks for souls who are willing to be knights of the Holy Queen. He desires to raise up loving defenders and heroic champions of Jesus, Mary and the Catholic faith. He wants men, women, children, priests and nuns who will serve Mary and lead others to the kingdom of heaven. Valiant souls are needed today. Joseph likes souls who zealously strive to lead others to the fountain of everlasting life. So we can conclude it to Jesus through Mary and Saint Joseph. He, Saint Joseph, always favors with special protection those souls who are enrolled beneath the standard of Mary, says Saint Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. Saint Andre Besset says, when the Holy Virgin Saint Joseph intercede together, it is very powerful. Pope Venerable. Pius XII says, Grant that according to your example, St. Joseph, we may keep our eyes fixed on our mother Mary, your most sweet spouse. Venerable Francis Xavier says, Mary, my mother, Joseph, my father, give me your eyes to contemplate Jesus. Give me your heart and spirits to understand him and to be impassioned by him. St. Joseph's Workshop St. Joseph is the glory of domestic life. He is loved educated, nourished and protected his son. He gave his entire life in loving service to Jesus and Mary. On 19 March 1916, Solemnity of St. Joseph, St. Jo- Jose Maria Escriva gave a homily in honor of St. Joseph that has become well known as St. Joseph's Workshop. In this homily, he describes a wonderful relationship that St. Joseph and Jesus had as father and son. 
Joseph caring for the child as he had been commanded made Jesus a craftsman transmitting his own professional skill to him so the neighbors of Nazareth would call Jesus both Faber and Fabri Filius that is craftsman and the son of the craftsman Jesus worked in Joseph's workshop and by Joseph's side what must Joseph have been how grace must have worked through him that he should be able to fulfill this task of the human upbringing of the son of God For Jesus must have resembled Joseph in his way of working in the features of his character and way of speaking Jesus's realism his eye for detail the way he sat at table and broke bread his preference for using everyday situations to give doctrine all this reflects his childhood and the influence of Joseph it's not possible to ignore the sublime mystery Jesus who is man who speaks with the accent of a particular district of Israel who also resembles a carpenter called Joseph is the son of God and who can teach god anything but he is also truly man and lives a normal life first as a child then as a boy helping in joseph's workshop and finally as a grown up man in the prime of life for jesus advanced in wisdom and age and grace before god and man in human life joseph was jesus's master in their daily contact full of refined affection glad to deny himself to take better care of jesus Isn't that reason enough for us to consider this just man the holy patriarch in whom faith of the old covenant bears fruit is the master of the interior life interior life is nothing but a continual direct conversation with Jesus so as to become one with him and Joseph can tell us many things about Jesus therefore never neglect devotion to him ite ad yosef go to joseph is the christian tradition which is put in the old testament book of genesis As master of the interior life a worker deeply involved in his job God's servant in continual contact with Jesus is Joseph Ite ad Yosef with the Saint Joseph Christian learns what it means to belong to God and fully assume one's place among men sanctifying the world get to know Joseph and you will find Jesus talk to Joseph and you will find Mary who always sheds peace about her in that attractive workshop at Nazareth the gifts of the holy spirit as we all know the general rule concerning all special graces granted to any human being whenever there is divine favor chooses someone to receive a special grace or to accept a lofty vocation god will adorn the person with all the gifts of the holy spirit needed to fulfill the task at hand this general rule is specially verified in case of saint joseph saint joseph as a loftiest vocation the greatest of mission he was called to be the spouse of the virgin mary and the father of jesus christ His mission required all the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit to be present in him. Consider that the Holy Spirit chose only Joseph to be the protector of the virgin and to be the true husband and consequently no created being can equal the glory of this great saint. Saint Joseph was not only chosen to be protector of Mary and the protector of Jesus, but Jesus and Mary are in heaven and so is Saint Joseph and his mission is ongoing. From heaven he watches over those entrusted to his loving care and asks the Holy Spirit to pour out gifts on his children. You have a mission to become holy and loving for God truly loves you and you have to love your neighbor and be merciful to them. You need the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit of the Father gives us answer to many of our life's questions. The Holy Spirit contains an excellent uh, gifts which helps us uh, and uh, we can make special prayer to the Holy Spirit to grant us all these gifts. The gift of wisdom to uh, get a charity and embrace all the virtues all good thing came to me with her and innumerable riches through her hands it is this gift of wisdom that will strengthens my faith and fortifies my hope and perfects my charity and promotes the practice of virtue in the highest degree wisdom enlightens my mind to discern and relish the things divine in the appreciation of which earthly joy lose their savor while the cross of christ gives me divine sweetness the gift of knowledge enables my soul to elevate and created the things at their word and also have relation with god knowledge and mask the pretense of creatures reveals emptiness and points the only true purpose as instruments in the service of god it shows me the loving care of god even in adversity and directs us me to glorify him in every circumstance of life guided by this light i can put the things first and prize the friendship of god beyond all else The gift of counsel enables my soul with supernatural prudence to judge promptly and rightly what must be done in difficult circumstances and apply the principles furnished by knowledge and understanding to the numerous contrivances cases that confront my day-to-day life and daily duties as a parent teacher public servant and citizen counsel 
helps me get a supernatural common sense a priceless treasure in the quest for salvation the gift of understanding helps me to grasp the meaning of the truths of the holy religion by faith i know them by understanding i can learn to appreciate and relish them and enable to penetrate the inner meaning of revealed truths and through them to quicken to newness of life my faith ceases to be sterile and inactive and inspires a mode of life that bears eloquent testimony to the faith i have my fortitude strengthens the soul against natural fears and supports me in the performance of duty for fortitude imparts to my soul an impulse and energy that moves me to undertake without hesitancy the most arduous task to face dangers trample under foot human respect and to endure without complaint the slow martyrdom of a lifelong tribulation the gift of piety enables me to give lift my heart in a filial affection for god my most loving father and inspire me to love and respect for his sake the persons and things consecrated to him as well as those who are vested with his authority his mother the saints saint joseph the church and its visible heads my parents superiors country and the rulers it is this gift of piety which fills me with the practice of religion not as a burdensome duty but like a delightful service the gift of fear of god helps me be filled with a sovereign respect for god and makes me dread nothing so much as to offend him by sin it is a fear that arises not from thought of hell or punishment but from sentiments of reverence filial submission to a heavenly father it is this gift that is the beginning of knowledge detaching me from worldly pressures that could in a way separate me from the love of god Oh my Lord Jesus who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the holy spirit to finish your work in the souls of apostles and disciples deign to grant the same holy spirit to us that we may perfect in our souls the work of your grace and your love grant to us the spirit of wisdom that we may despise the perishable things of this world and aspire only for the things of eternal life the spirit of understanding to enlighten our minds with the light of your divine truth the spirit of counsel that we may choose the surest way of pleasing god and gaining heaven the spirit of fortitude that we may bear our cross with you and that we may not be overcome by all the obstacles that oppose our salvation the spirit of knowledge that we may know god and know ourselves and grow perfect in the science of the saints the spirit of piety that we may find the service of god sweet and amiable the spirit of fear that we may be filled with a loving reverence towards god may dread in any way what displeases him mark us dear lord with the sign of your true discipleship and animate in us all the things with your holy spirit amen